Welcome to Revelation Unraveled. I'm your host, William Tapley, also known as the Third Eagle of the Apocalypse and the co-prophet of these end times. Are you praying your daily rosary? And the reason I mention that is because of the headline this morning on the Drudge Report, and I will show that to you if you can see it. And it says, Muslims behead priest in Normandy church, ISIS celebrates. That is symbolic of the cutting off of the head of the Roman Catholic Church, and that would be Pope Benedict. Satan has succeeded in putting his man on the throne of Peter, and of course that's the anti-pope, the false prophet of the end times, Pope Francis. And this week he is going to Poland to celebrate World Youth Day, and he's going to bring his poison to that country if he possibly can. As you know, in the book of Revelation, Wormwood spreads his bitterness to one-third of the fountains of waters. And that's what he is doing. He is going to try to convince Poland to bring in Muslim immigrants because he wants to see the same kind of evil in that country that is already spreading throughout France and the United States and most of Europe. And of course, that's exactly what the false prophet wants to do. And before his going to Krakow and the World Youth Day, the Vatican spread this evil logo, and I have explained the meaning of that to you many times. It is a perversion of the cross, and it shows us sexual perversion. When you look at it upside down, you have an ank cross. And the ang cross itself is sexual perversion because it shows the oval feminine and the triad of masculinity. And when you look at it right side up, it shows Hathor the cow goddess, another demonic vision from Egypt. The two horns on either side, the red and the blue, symbolize Jesus and the Father. And the yellow circle in the center symbolizes the Holy Spirit. And of course, that's a perversion because it depicts the Holy Trinity in sexual terms. And a perversion of the Trinity in the end times would be Satan, the false prophet, and the Antichrist. And that's what Pope Francis is going to try to subvert both the nation of Poland and the church in Poland. And one of his main reasons of going to Poland is to promote his apostolic exhortation called Amoris Laetitia. And here is his main man, Cardinal Schoenborn. And Cardinal Schoenborn says that Amoris Laetitia allows communion for the divorced and remarried. And that brings about the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet in his chapter 10, verse number 3, and which Jesus warned about in the Olivet Discourse. When you see that abomination of desolation, Roman Catholics must flee the field. The good news is that they will become the stone cut out from the mountain which will defeat the one world government. And now I want to read a very interesting article posted last week on the Associated Press. I would like your opinion about this because it tells us that Pope Francis is being opposed by many bishops and cardinals in the Catholic Church, not only those in Poland. Remember, after he published his apostolic exhortation, uh, Amoris Laetitia, the Polish bishops said they would not give communion to the divorced and remarried. I believe Poland is going to save themselves from the great chastisements because of their strong stand, unless they succumb to the wiles of Pope Francis and the evil logos coming out of the Vatican. Now this date line is last week, July 20th. It's by Nicole Winfield. And this is an excellent summary. I won't read the whole thing. I will read excerpts and you can. I will try to post the link below. The Vatican is striking back at conservative critics of Pope Francis' landmark document on family life, that's Amoris Laetitia in Latin, ratcheting up 
it's defense of the Pope. The Vatican is going to support the Pope. That's because the holy city is being trampled underfoot by the Gentiles. As John prophesied in Revelation chapter 11, verse number 2. It's defense of the Pope with new vigor as bishops begin implementing this document around the world. All bishops must come out one way or the other, either in favor of Le Morris, a Morris Laetitia or against it, including your bishop and my bishop. The Vatican newspaper La Salvatore Romano on Wednesday carried a lengthy essay by an Italian Catholic historian insisting that Francis, the joy of love, that's the English translation, was absolutely in line with his predecessors and church doctrine on the thorny issue of whether divorced and civilly remarried Catholics can receive communion. That is a total lie in this Vatican newspaper. This document subverts 2,000 years of church teaching. Earlier this month, the Vatican-approved magazine La Civilta Catolica ran an interview with Cardinal Christoph Schonborn in which the Vienna Archbishop pointedly rejected conservative claims that Francis work didn't count as an authoritative teaching document. Now Cardinal Burke has stated that Amoris Laetitia is not an authoritative teaching document. I believe he is mistaken. I believe he is looking at this document through rose-tinted glasses. The Pope's document is true and authoritative from the church, and it proves that the church has been taken over by Satan in these end times. Both articles upped the ante in the increasingly divisive theological and ideological battle sparked by the joy of love, and were published on the eve of Francis' trip to Poland, where the Jesuit Pope will symbolically deliver the document to the deeply conservative Polish church at a youth rally this week. And as I said, the Polish bishop, bishops have already denounced the idea of giving communion to the divorced and civilly remarried Catholics. They are upholding the church's teaching. Let's pray that they continue to do so. And let's pray that the courage of the Polish bishops spreads through all the bishops throughout the world. As I said in the book of Revelation, only one-third of the waters are made bitter by wormwood. When it was released in April, the joy of love immediately sparked controversy because it opened the door to civilly remarried Catholics receiving communion. Church teaching holds that unless these divorced and remarried Catholics obtain an annulment, a church decree that their first marriage was invalid, they cannot receive the sacrament since they are seen as committing adultery. While it's not just the church, Jesus himself said that any man who puts away his wife and marries another commits adultery. And this article is a very good summary, by the way. And you won't find a good summary like this in Catholic publications. You have to look at, go to a secular media, in this case, the Associated Press. Francis didn't create a church-wide pass for these Catholics, but suggested in vague terms, absolutely, Pope Francis is the author of confusion and strategically placed footnotes, footnote number 351, the opposite of Mary's Rosary 153, that bishops and priests could do so on a case-by-case -case basis after accompanying them on a spiritual journey of discernment. That would be like Jesus saying that any man who puts away his wife, marries another, commits adultery, except on a case-by-case -case basis. Pope Francis and the Vatican, they are lying to Catholics, please wake up, you people. The conservative criticism was swift, well, good. American Cardinal Raymond Burke, a figurehead for arch conservatives, well, here's where secular newspaper gets it wrong, of course, they have terms like that, derogatory terms for people who are upholding what the church has taught for 2,000 years, for upholding what Jesus taught. They don't like it who was removed by Francis, of course, as the head of the Vatican Supreme Court, insisted that the document wasn't part of the church's teaching magisterium, but rather was a personal reflection on meeting of bishops about family matters. I only wish that were true. Cardinal Schonborn, now this is the Pope's right-hand man, 
And the Pope has told us that Cardinal Schoenborn's interpretation is his interpretation. Cardinal Schoenborn rejected Burke's claim in his interview with Civilta Catholica. The document Schoenborn said is an act of the magisterium that makes the teaching of the church present and relative today. Italian Cardinal Carlo Caffara, another leading conservative, has criticized the document as vague and confusing, which it is, and denied that it opened the door to communion since doing so would contradict previous church teaching on the indissolubility of marriage. 2,000 years of church teaching in the words of Jesus. France's own doctrine czar, German Cardinal Gerhard Müller, concurred with Kafara, saying the Pope would have been more clear if he had intended such an opening. Well, no, the Pope doesn't want to be clear. Mueller argued in a May 4th speech in Spain that decisions about whether someone can receive the sacraments cannot be arrived at purely in the realm of individual private discernment. He is 100%. Priests do not have the authority to grant annulments. It was the Pope himself who refused an annulment to King Henry VIII. Henry VIII started his own church. In the Episcopal Church, communion is not valid. It is not true consecration. Only Roman Catholic priests can consecrate the body and the blood of our Lord. What Pope Francis is doing in this evil document is to take away that power of consecration because he is ruining one of the three requirements for a valid consecration, and that is the intention of the priest. Pope Francis is saying in this magisterial document from the church that the priests must give communion to divorced and civilly remarried going against the gospel. That invalidates the Eucharist for all Catholic priests in the Catholic Church unless they or their bishops repudiate Pope Francis' document, Amoris Laetitia. And let me finish this article. The initiative could signal a more concerted campaign by the Vatican to ensure that the joy and love is interpreted as Francis intended. That's exactly right. This Vatican is supporting Pope Francis because it is being trampled underfoot by the Gentiles, as John prophesied in Revelation 11:2, as I said. Already conservative, this is interpretation, conservative, faithful to the magisterium is what is correct. Already conservative, Philadelphia Archbishop Charles Chaput has said that divorced and civilly remarried Catholics can only receive communion in his archdiocese. He is guaranteeing that the consecrations of priests in Philadelphia are valid. That is good news for you people. If they abstain from sex and live as brother and sister, on the other hand, Cardinal uh, Supich in Archdiocese of Chicago, he has said anyone and everyone may receive communion. Jesus did not give communion to the traitor Judas. He did not give that which is holy to the dogs. Your communions in Chicago are now invalid unless your priest repudiates what your Cardinal Supich and Pope Francis is doing, and they must. Otherwise, I would advise you to move to some other archdiocese. And for another opinion, now I read this before, but I want to read it again. This is, Arch, this is Bishop Tobin from Rhode Island. Upon reflection, it's become pretty clear that Pope Francis' document on marriage and the family, Amoris Laetitia, is marked by ambiguity, and that's intentional on the Holy Father's part. Bravo, Bishop Tobin, you are 100% correct. That explains why in just the last couple of days we've had very different interpretations of the document from two prominent leaders of the church, Archbishop Charles Chaput of Philadelphia and Cardinal Christoph Schoenborn of Vienna and from many other commentators as well. And now I want to conclude by one more bishop who has taken a stand on this, and this is Bishop John Thomas John Paprocki in the Springfield Diocese just south of Chicago. So you people in Chicago, Chicago, maybe you should consider moving to the Springfield Diocese. And here's what he wrote. He wrote this in a letter in, uh, to the State Journal Register in Springfield. The Bible clearly 
teaches about the proper disposition to receive Holy Communion in the first letter to the Corinthians. Now listen to this. Where St. Paul wrote, whoever eats in the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of profaning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a man examine himself and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body, eats and drinks judgment upon himself. This is a very serious matter. And that's from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 27 through 29. This biblical teaching is reflected in Canons 915 to 916 of the Catholic Church's Code of Canon Law. The Church has always taught this. Pope Francis is the false prophet of the end times. Cardinal Schoenborn is his right-hand man. This applies not only in the Archdiocese of Philadelphia, but also here in the Diocese of Springfield, as it does everywhere in the church. Well, good for you, Bishop Thomas Paprocki. And now I want to take one or two minutes to explain why this action of Pope Francis and Cardinal Schoenborn invalidates the Eucharist. A Catholic priest must have three principles. He must follow the same words that Jesus used in consecrate the, consecrating the body and blood of our Lord. He must use the same matter. He must have the same intention. Now the first two, you can see at Mass yourself. You can hear the priest say the right words. You can see, he, see him consecrate the bread. There is no problem there. If you see a priest not do either of those two things, then you know the Eucharist is invalid. The church has always taught that. That's why a priest is very careful to read the words, even though he has it memorized. Most priests I have seen always read the words so that he gets it exactly right. But the intentions of the priest you do not know. Those are hidden. They reflect the Holy Spirit. The first two requirements, the matter and the words, reflect God the Father and God the Son. The intention is hidden and therefore, the church's intention overrides the priest's intention. That has always been. And that's why Satan has changed the church's intention through his false prophet, Pope Francis. And the only way you in your diocese or in your parish can now receive the true body and the blood of our Lord is if your priest repudiates Pope Francis or if your bishop, such as Bishop Tobin or Bishop, let me get the names right, Bishop Paprocki or the Bishop in Philadelphia. You, they must repudiate what the Pope is doing. And uh, I'm sorry I got their names wrong. I haven't memorized everything yet. In any event, I hope uh, you get this message. I hope you understand it. I hope the bishops realize that they must take a stand. And the Bible says that two-thirds of them will stand up against the false prophet. And that's the good news. But remember this remnant Catholic Church, which must, must separate itself from the mountain, we will become the stone which takes over the whole world and eventually defeats the one world government. And that's why, by the way, I have endorsed Donald Trump for president. Notice that Pope Francis opposes Donald Trump. That should be a good hint for all of us here in the United States. And as always, if you'd like more information about my ministry here on YouTube, visit my 30gilmedia.com website.